Good morning. It's my real joy to welcome you, welcome you all here this morning. You're really welcome from wherever you are joining us. And this Sunday, as we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, can I please commend to you the wonderful words and music that Keith Day has shared with us in our newsletter this week. So as we think about today and this Sabbath day and the celebration of Christ the King, you may wish to tune into and click on the links in the newsletter of the additional music that Keith is in inviting us to engage with. So a huge thanks to Keith Day, who will also be playing the organ for us today in our service. And another huge thanks also to um, Owen McColl, who will be doing our first reading, and also to Jane Pryor, who has prepared and will lead our intercessions this morning. So a huge welcome to everyone. And just before we start our service, I'm just minded that as we gather on Zoom, we're missing some of those essential symbols and rituals that we usually would engage in on a Sunday when preparing to gather together. The getting ready, the leaving the house, the sound of the door closing, the walking to the church or cycling or getting in our cars. And so I just um, ask you this morning just to, just to allow yourself some time to settle into this service, to settle into stepping into the abundantly loving presence of God who is with us here today as we gather and always. Many of you may have just walked from your dining room into your study or just switched on your computer and you haven't had that opportunity to really prepare yourself. So let's take a moment's silence to prepare ourselves before we say together our opening prayer. So we say together, we come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with a love for you, now and forever. Amen. So I invite you as we say our confession to repeat after me when I say, Lord, have mercy. You say, Lord, have mercy. And Christ, have mercy. You respond with Christ, have mercy. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours, but we trust in our own power and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness, draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. I now invite Owen to read to us our first Bible passage. This is from Ezekiel chapter 34, verse, verses 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on the day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from, it, from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Thank you, Owen. And our gospel reading this morning is taken from Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, 
truly I tell you, just as you did it for one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord. I feel rather like your special envoy, having journeyed with you thus far and now being sent out to be formed into a priest and reporting back from you from time to time and there is so much to report of the joy of joining the Westcott community. Not least, I get to be formed and shaped by the students who are coming towards the end of their training, one of whom is Beck Wilkinson, who I'm so delighted has joined our benefits. But I'm just in awe of the Westcott community, and it's a real delight. And one recent highlight was a quiet day where we had the opportunity to reflect upon the liturgy used when a priest is ordained. And the opening words of that liturgy say, priests are called to be servants and shepherds, to be servants and shepherds. This notion of servant leadership is right at the beginning of the liturgy, reminding us of Christ as the servant king. We may not all be called to the priesthood, but we are all called to be a witness to Christ in our daily interactions. Archbishop Stephen Cottrell explains this well when he writes, what the Christian faith offers is a whole new way of inhabiting the world and a whole new way of relating to God and a whole new way of being human. I wonder what this might mean for each of us today. I recently watched the rather harrowing film, Bridge to Derabithia. It's a beautiful story and it's the story of a young boy and a young girl who are both teased at school. And because of this, they become good friends. They have adventures in the woods next to their homes. And in the woods, there is a deep river, which they decide to cross. And they do this using a rope swing that just happens to be hanging there. And I'm reminded of the bridges and rope swings that we have in our benefice, one just here, just down the road from the vicarage. And it's quite a beautiful image. And once this boy and girl are across the stream, they discover this woods that are a grand place to explore. And they find a tumble down tree house, which over time they have the joy and the excitement of rebuilding. The girl has an amazing 
imagination. And the boy is grounded in his thoughts. The girl teaches the boy to open his mind and his heart rather than his eyes to see the kingdom of Terabithia. Interestingly, they don't create the kingdom. It is already there, but they have to open their hearts to see it, to see the paradise that it is. The boy has a little sister who would like to join them in the woods, but she's too small to use the rope swing, so they never let her go with them. I won't spoil the story too much in case you want to watch the film, but in the end, the boy builds a bridge over the stream so his little sister can get to the treehouse and beyond. Having had his mind opened, opened, he then opens the kingdom of Terabithia for his little sister. It occurred to me reading our Bible passages this morning in light of Stephen Cottrell's remarks and as we celebrate Christ the King this Sunday to ask this question of us. How open are we to living a faithful life where Christ the King rules our hearts. So what are we opening our hearts to? Ezekiel's words give us a glimpse of the character of God. They talk of a shepherding, loving God who searches and seeks, strengthens, protects and saves. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. We are opening our hearts to God who seeks the lost and strengthens the weak. I am reminded when reading this passage with its description of the day of clouds and thick darkness of the time we find ourselves in. A time when we may feel consumed by the darkness of shortening days and an uncertain pandemic. Where we might feel alone. Ezekiel reassures us that our God who searches and seeks has not forgotten us. Perhaps this pandemic may also be a moment of possibility and potential, a moment where God brings life when all may seem lost. A time when we are called to show people the bridge or the rope swing to the kingdom. Our gospel reading from Matthew is one of the few parables which deal with judgment. And I'm reminded, especially as the Church of England begins to engage in the living in love and faith discussions this week, that it is clear in this parable we are judged on our provision of hospitality and how we seek the least and the lost. The gospel is good news for all. And I'm left pondering, how will we be judged on how we engage with this document and these discussions? How will we be judged on our response to this pandemic that we find ourselves in? How will we be judged on our daily interactions with those around us? And how much do we want to meet with Jesus? Enough to suspend the preoccupations of this world that distract us enough to adopt Jesus's servant-hearted approach to life? Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Christ the King is not only at the right hand of God, he comes to us again and again in the flesh of individual men, women and children, in their wretchedness and in their need. 
He is present in the people we are called to help, the people who cross our path. A few weeks ago, I was making one of my regular visits and there was a real hullabaloo further down the street. There were two different families who were in dispute. And the instinct is to leave well alone, to walk on by, to think this has nothing to do with me. But the distress was getting louder and bluer and people were starting to come out of their homes to watch and see. So I excused myself from my doorstep visit and slowly approached the warring families, praying as I approached in my mind and in my heart. And I spoke with a person who had tears in their eyes and a very red face. They were angry and embarrassed about the language they'd been using and about shouting. And I suggested we all have crisis moments in our lives when we have not acted as we had hoped we would. We all do. I reassured her that I wasn't judging and we formed a good link, which we're slowly building upon. It was a beautiful moment, which is bearing fruit. And so as we mourn our current loss of the Eucharist, the words of C.S. Lewis are so pertinent when he says, next to the blessed sacrament itself, your neighbor is the holiest object presented to your senses. How open are our hearts to allow the kingdom, the kingdom which is Christ the King, to shape our thinking and our actions so that we, in turn, may open the hearts of others. There is a rope swing or a bridge to help us across. Christ is the rope swing. Christ is the bridge for us to access his kingdom. If we are just open to it, we can see all that is promised to each one of us and promised to the church. If we dare to let go of our secular ways and dare to show people the bridge, we will meet Jesus in our midst. So that when that time comes, we will already know the Jesus who stands before us because we have dared to meet him in our daily lives. Amen. We will now have our hymn, When I Needed a Neighbour. <laughs> Were you there? 
now invite Jane to lead us in our intercessions. The painting we're looking at is Christ and the Woman Taken in Adultery by Nicholas Poussin. We see Jesus stepping into the moment when the woman is about to be stoned. He doesn't judge her, but offers her the chance of a new life. It is a moment of mercy and forgiveness. Let us pray together. We pray to our everlasting God, through our Saviour Jesus, who is both Christ the King and the Son of Man and who understands our needs and the needs of this world. Lord God, we bring before you our seven churches of which your son is king. We pray that you will draw us together and unite us in the love of Christ, that we may proclaim with one voice your justice and righteousness in a broken world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for your world. We pray for peace, reconciliation and healing in the places of war, terrorism and the COVID pandemic. We pray that the nations of this world may be united and subject to the rule of Christ the King through whom and for whom all things were created. In silence, we pray for the people of Ethiopia at this time, suffering new violence, and for the many refugees fleeing the country. We pray for a ceasefire in fighting so that aid can reach those in need. We ask for your justice for the poor that a peaceful political solution will be reached. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our nation at this time of lockdown. Give wisdom and insight to our government and to all frontline and key workers. We pray for the economic well-being of our country. We remember those who face uncertainty in their work, and those who have lost their jobs. As local communities help us to be sensitive to their needs. Help us to know the people around us, to be our brothers and sisters in Christ, and to serve them as he would serve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those who suffer. Particularly, we pray for the elderly, isolated and vulnerable at this time. We pray that they will know the presence of your Son alongside them and the power of Christ the King within them bringing peace and healing. We ask for help and encouragement for those caring for them. We remember by name, in the silence of our hearts, all those in need in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we raise before you all who have died and who are now with your son, the King. We pray for those who have recently died and for their resurrection into the kingdom of God and for those whose anniversary falls at this time. 
we remember John Myers and Kathy and their family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we give thanks to you for all that you do in our lives. Open our hearts and our minds to see the possibilities that your kingdom offers us. Open our eyes to see you in the midst of us and help us to draw others to experience your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together now the collect for today. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So just before we say the peace to each other, I'd just like to remind you that after our closing hymn, we will be opening up breakout rooms for us to in small groups gather and share some fellowship with each other and get to know new faces and just connect with each other. So please do get yourself a coffee and join one of the breakout groups to spend some time together. But as has become our tradition, we generally give each other the sign of peace, either using British sign language or a wave or a smile or a thumbs up. So in a moment, we'll go on to gallery view so we can see each other. So, to crown all things, there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.